all the early businesses that we owned together have disappeared. They didn't disappear. They failed. They failed, yeah. Well, yeah right. <laughs> but, but we took so much out of them before they failed that we, it still worked out fine for us. We evolved them. I mean, but, but, but literally, the, the three base businesses all ended up disappearing. They went out of business. They, didn't, they no longer fit into society in a sense. And actually, the very first deal that, that we joined in on was something called diversified retailing, which was in Baltimore. We bought an apartment store there. And uh, we had Sandy Goddess, man had 10%, Charlie had 10%, and, and in his partnership, he had 10%. And I had 80% in our partnership, and the three of us, and we always treated it as, you know, we may have had 80, but we were equal partners. We put $6 million into that. We called it diversified retailing, but we only had one <laughs> department store chain, but we had them. No. <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of fun with that, but we also saw after we were in a little while, department, this department store. As the w. ink dried we, dried, we realized you'd made a big mistake. Didn't take very long. Yeah. Why? What happened? Well, you heard the old story. He said, let me out of this trap. I've decided I don't like the cheese. <laughs> we just wised up the fact that it was one tough business we'd bought into and that the sellers had made the good decision. We'd so the, made a bad one. We had some terrific people who were running it for us that were actually related to Sandy's wife. Uh, Exceptionally and, uh, honorable people. Really honorable people and smart if you're yes. losing money in a business with a smart, decent person, you know, it, we got a problem. I mean, that's the business. <laughs> Use the smart, decent person to move them over some other place and move the capital some other place. And the company was not yet losing money, but we could see. We soon realized it was about to lose money. <laughs> yeah. And so we, we, we sold the apartment store. It went out of business in 1983. But... Hutzers, which was the silk stocking department store, they went out of business in, I don't know, 1985 or something. They're, they're gone. And the people there, quite understandably, wanted to build more branch stores, but you don't want to put more money into a, a business that's destined for failure. Now, we put $6 million of capital in that, and it was a dumb decision and everything. But that $6 million, what would it be worth now, Charlie? It, uh, they got four-tenths of a share. Great many billions. Oh, it's... Tens of billions. Yeah. Now, if the department store had succeeded, we'd have a nice little business to <laughs> send us a little check. But because it failed, we've made 25. Well, we made more than 25 billion probably, in that. It didn't look like it at the time, though. <laughs> so when you realized it was a mistake, what did you do? How, how did you address we, it? We asked Sandy, who was the best salesman among us, to go sell it. <laughs> 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 and, and we sold it. And uh, we put the money into Berkshire. We got about 95% of our money back. Yeah. And we'd borrowed $6 million in there. So now we had that. We bought Berkshire stock and we bought blue chip stamp stock. And we eventually put it all together. It looked like a plate of spaghetti at one time, which was not good. as just complicated. And so we, we put them all together. And, uh, you know, I've still got stock and Charlie's still got stock that came out of diversified retailing, as do a number of my partners at, uh, up from the old days. One thing we've learned is if it's clear that something is a mistake is to fix it quickly. It doesn't get better while you wait. It's the way our dads thought in both cases. Who the hell knows where you get your values from exactly, but basically, the, you know, you have a few people that are teachers to you in life and are, are not formal teachers, and the most important people are your, generally are your parents. And I never heard my dad say to me in my life, you know, be sure you pay all your debts, but <laughs> I just watched how he lived. And you want to have certain people in life that you don't want to disappoint. You want to have people that, that make you a better person than you otherwise would be. And Charlie does that for me now, but my dad did it for me early on. I didn't know his dad, but from everything I've heard about his dad, I didn't know he had the same experience. The mistakes that have been most extreme in Berkshire's history are mistakes of omission. Uh, they don't show up in our figures. Uh, they show up in opportunity costs. In other words, we, we have opportunities. We almost do it. In retrospect, we can tell that we were very much mistaken not to do it. In terms of the shareholders, those are the ones in our history that have really cost the most. And very few managements do much thinking or talking about opportunity costs. But Warren, we have blown 
Billions and billions and billions. I might as well say it. You're right. <laughs> right. And we keep doing it. Some might say we're getting better at it. <laughs> I don't like mentioning the specific companies because the, you know, we, we, we may in due course want to buy do so at our price. But uh, practically everywhere in, in life and in corporate life too, uh, what really costs in comparison with what easily might have been are the blown opportunities. I mean, it's just, it's an awesome amount of money. When I was somewhat younger, I was offered 300 shares of Bell Ridge Oil. An idiot could have told there was no possibility of losing money and a large possibility of making money. I bought it. The guy called me back three days later and offered me 1,500 more shares. But this time I had to sell something to buy the damn Bell Ridge oil. That mistake, if you traced it through, has cost me $200 million. And I, it was all because I, I had to go to a slight inconvenience and sell something. Berkshire does that kind of thing, too. We never get over it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I might add that when we speak of errors of, uh, of omission, of which we've had plenty, and some very big ones, uh, we don't mean not buying some stock where we, a friend runs it or we know the name and it went from one to a hundred. That doesn't mean anything. It's only, we only regard errors as being things that are within our circle of competence. So if somebody knows how to make money in cocoa beans or they know how to make money in a software company or anything, and, and we miss that, that is not an error as far as we're concerned. What's an error is when it's something we understand and we stand there and stare at it and we don't do anything. Or worse yet, what really gets me is when we do something very small with it. We do an, an eyedropper's worth of it. Uh, when we could do it very big. Uh, Charlie uh, refers to that elegantly when I do that sort of thing is when I'm sucking my thumb. Uh, and, and they're really, I mean, we have, we have, we have been thumb suckers. Uh, at times uh, with businesses that we understood well and uh, it may have been because we started buying and the price moved up a little and and uh, we waited around hoping we would get more at the price we originally started there can be a lot of things uh, uh, but th those are those are huge mistakes conventional accounting of course does not pick those up at all but but uh, they're in our scorebook <laughs>